Hello, this is Chris Minnick with Webucator. In this video, I'm going to explore a CSS Flexbox tournament bracket. This video was inspired by a blog post by David Krawaller, which is available at the URL shown here. In his blog post, David walks through a code pen created by Aaron Duby, where he used Flex to build a tournament bracket without having to resort to any other positioning. Here's what it looks like. And here's the simplified HTML. And then here's the CSS. The magic happens right here. All flex boxes have a flex direction, which is row or column. The main element is a flex row and contains four UL elements. The flex property align items defaults to stretch, which means that they will get all the same height. Here's the interesting stuff, namely what's actually going on in the columns. Here's how the rules will be applied. The elements with flex grow will be resized to give the container its expected height which, due to align items being set to stretch, should result to columns with equal heights. The value of flex grow dictates how much the elements should grow in proportion to each other. This means the team spacers and the game spacer li will all be the same height, although the latter has a minimum of 40. The first and last li will be half size, which is how we ensure vertical centering inside the column without having to use the justify content flex property. If we had not put min height 40 pixels on the spacers, the first round would be totally squashed. Since the tallest content is the one dictating the height of the other columns, and thus doesn't need to grow. To make this more visible, Here's the bracket again with flex grow 1 items marked in yellow and the flex grow 0.5 items marked in blue. In essence, we used flex for two different things. By making the outer main element a flex row, we used the default stretch value of align items to make sure the columns would get equal height. Then by making each column a flex column, we used flex grow to make sure the elements filled out the column height in the way we wanted. I hope you found this video useful. Thanks again to David for the inspiration. Check out his blog at the URL shown here for other articles related to web development.